After years of development and 5,000 delays, Cyberpunk 2077 was actually launched last week. It was so hyped up that literally everybody was playing and streaming it. It even broke the most concurrent players on Steam. The game has already earned its developmental cost that every studio tries to earn with a game that they release out. But with this hype game, bugs. Exactly what we are waiting for. The game was running, but it was running with loads of bugs that took everyone by surprise. These bugs are more prominent in the last gen consoles that is PS4 and Xbox One X, but in general, it is in every single platform. Of course, these bugs are hilarious to watch, but to be honest, I'm fine with these bugs. To be honest, sometimes it's very annoying to see these bugs happening, but also at the same time, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not game-breaking bugs. Everybody has been pointing out the bugs that this game has, and there has been so many of them that we are not able to count. And with that, people are pissed that a studio like CD Projekt Red released a game like this with so many bugs. I mean, I don't think that there's any game in the world that does not have any bugs when the game comes out. I mean, to be honest, if there's no bugs in a game, that is not actually a game. Because having bugs is inevitable. But seeing a lot of bugs in one particular game that has been delayed over and over again, and there's loads of them, that is sort of disappointing. And speaking of last gen consoles, it's like that they didn't care about it at all. The game looks awful, the textures don't load, it's not sharp at all, the models look weird. If you see a comparison video, you can see how bad the game looks in last gen consoles uh, versus PCs or PlayStation 5 or even Xbox Series X. It's like they made the game playable and that's about it. There's so many videos showing how the game sucks because it's terrible to play. It's like Cyberpunk is having direct competition to WWE 2K20. 2K Sports! Looks like you're not alone in this one. Everybody who brought a game on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One X had a terrible time and they just are angry, to which CD Projekt Red actually apologized in their famous yellow background, saying that it was their fault for not showing the last gen version of the game and they are bringing in more patches in the next 7 days and more bigger patches will be coming by January and February the next year. Now all of this is great that they're apologizing for the game and they're you know, sending out patches, but it is not cool nowadays that these game devs are able to just release out patches to fix the game instead of fixing the game, you know, from the first get-go. Nowadays, most of the games are being released because they're being pushed a lot to release the game and then they have to fix up with these loads of patches that comes around later on. Which sucks to be honest, but then again, you know, game designing and everything is a different process and I don't want to get into it. Maybe it's a different kind of politics, maybe something else happened, but it's just ridiculous to see how we are living in a world where we have to rely on patches for the game fixes instead of game being fixed and then being launched. Now since CD Projekt Red has been delaying this game over and over again, so maybe delaying it again might even make gamers more angry and they might even, you know, refund the pre-order. So maybe that's why they rushed the release. CD Projekt Red is also offering refunds. For digital owners, they can refund through PSN or Xbox and for physical owners, you have to go to the shop where they got it from. And if that does not work, then people can email CD Projekt Red as they provided an email. Now that is good that they're offering refunds, but it's just sad to see that a game that is supposed to be built for last gen, and to be honest, last gen is not over yet, they're not able to make a game look good in last gen consoles, which is completely sad. And now apologizing later on is like, what, what are you doing guys? Well, the issues don't end here only. After a lot of bugs and people not able to play the games in especially last gen consoles, there are a lot of things that is also missing from the game that was there in the presentation, but it's just not there or that are just not there at all. Now again, these games are completely, you know, compared with GTA games. Now, to be honest, in my opinion, I don't think so you should compare all the way to GTA, but still there are some comparisons which make sense. The basic quality of life are missing out of from this game. For example, not able to disable the objective marker. No way to lower down the aim down sight sensitivity. For some reason, crouch and skip dialogue has the same key. And yes, left control is also for crouch, but if you're crouched and then there is a dialogue going on, you cannot uncrouch yourself. Wait, wait, like what? Why can I not do that? Customization is so minimal. You gave all customization on how the face should look like, but it did not give much customization over body. Like, like I cannot choose how my six packs looks like, how my arms looks like, how muscular I want to become. 
In a world so big, there are very few NPCs and I'm not talking about crowd density. Of course, keeping it high will make more NPCs but the thing is, there's not enough cars roaming around, there's not enough people in every location of the, of the night city. And also the interaction between NPCs are, are not much. Most of the NPCs said the same thing. Of course, the same NPCs are used over and over again, but that's not a problem. And generally speaking, I don't think so. this is much of an importance to have an NPC talk to you, different kind of NPCs talk to you, have kind of interaction with them. It's not very much importance, but still it's kind of, it's neglected a little bit. Maybe it should have been worked a little bit more. And sometimes these NPCs are just scared for some reason. Like I once parked my car in front of a guy, he just started running. Like, why are you running, dude? I just parked a car. You cannot add tattoos or cut your hair because there is no barber shop, and there are a lot of other things that is just not there. There is a list in Reddit which was made that lists out all the things that is missing. Some of them I agree, while some of them I don't, and it's too much nitpicking. But yes, the game does miss some simple things. Another major thing for me is how this game is not optimized at all for older GPUs. I mean, I know that the recommended is a 1060. But I have a 1050 Ti graphics card and uh, it should be more than minimum but I'm not even able to get uh, 30 FPS uh, or more than that a little bit in uh, even, even 1080p low or 1600 by 900 p low. So it's not very much optimized for older GPUs which is you know it's a small thing but it is also a thing that games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare was able to do or even Black Ops Cold War was able to do using their new engines. How are they able to do it and Cyberpunk is not. Now again, a lot of people can argue how Cyberpunk and Call of Duty are two different games and they are two different engines. I understand that, but still, optimization is required in every single game and I feel like it was a little bit low in this particular game. For example, the Ryzen CPUs, a lot of people are already talking about how Ryzen is not able to use all its CPUs. It's only using few CPUs, the physical cores I believe. Think about that, it's not at all optimized for even Ryzen CPUs, not optimized for older GPUs, which I think they should have done and I hope that in future patches that will be applied. But with all these negativity that I just talked about, how the game is buggy, how it's not optimized, how the uh, game is missing some simple quality of life uh, importance, that doesn't mean that the game is bad. The game is really good, has great storyline, great characters, amazing looking city, really love driving the car around. There's so many side missions to do, like literally so many side missions to do. You don't even have to go to the main storyline to enjoy the game. You can just go and spend your life only in side missions because there's so many. You can buy cars, you can do a lot of things, a lot of activities. Drinking in the game, I feel like it's really cool because then everything just goes in a very cool animation. That's really cool to, to have and it's really cool to just move around the city, man. The city is amazing and takes so many photos. The only thing that is happening the experience if all these bugs were taken out. If you can fix all these bugs, have a little bit of better optimization and especially fix the PS4 and Xbox version of the game, then I think a lot of people will enjoy the game and I hopefully, hopefully by January and February they can bring some patches we can, which can fix uh, the visual of the game and all these issues that the game is coming with. So at least right now, if you're thinking to buy Cyberpunk 2077 in PlayStation 4 or Xbox One X, do not do that right now. Wait it out and see whether the game has been fixed with all those bugs and all those issues because there's a lot of texture loading issues, there's a lot of issues in, in the PlayStation 4 base version. So definitely wait it out and see what happens. Now in the end, did this game have a rough launch? Yes, definitely. Does that make the game bad? No, not at all. Definitely give this game a try. If you can buy this game, if you can get this game, definitely buy it. Especially on PC, this game looks phenomenal. Also, if you have PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, go for that. But in PC, at least, I know the game looks phenomenal and it's really good to play. Definitely not bad and a really good storyline and I'm really loving the game right now. What do you guys think about Cyberpunk 2077? Do you think it's overhyped because a lot of people are talking about that? Or do you think it's actually pretty cool to play the game? For me, it is actually pretty cool to play the game and I would love to continue. Let me know in the comments below what do you think? Is it overhyped or no? And do you think is it a failure or is it actually going pretty well? Let me know all of that in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe to this channel because more such content are coming up very very soon. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay awesome and keep on playing games and have fun. And remember to have fun.